name is Ed Nardi, Chair of the Natural Resources Commission, and I am calling this public meeting to order at 7 p.m. The meeting will be conducted virtually to ensure public access to the deliberations of the meeting. The public may access this call through video conferencing or telephone. Following the presentation by the petitioner and questions from the commission, members of the public will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment. Please identify yourself with name and address for the record. You can also raise your hand from your phone by dialing star nine and use star mute six to unmute. All video screens will be turned off with the exception of the commissioners, Delia and the current petitioner. Once the commission has acted on an application, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. Screen sharing will not be permitted unless absolutely necessary, and all votes will be taken by roll call vote. In the event of any technical difficulties, all matters on the agenda that have not been heard will be automatically continued to the January 5th NRC meeting. At this time, I would ask the commissioners to introduce themselves. Greg? Greg Higgins. Nick? Nick Pappas. Sarah? Sarah Grimwood. And Gary? Gary Kleiman. Thank you, guys. Um, Delia, uh, anything on the, uh, oh, excuse me, approval of meeting minutes, both September 1, 2022 and September 22, 2022. Um, I, I had a couple of typos only that I forwarded to Karen. Same here. Okay. I, I do have a comment, actually. The 22nd minutes. The um, director's update about the CPC application. Um, Delia, it says in the minutes that the 2.3 million was based on um, a sublot of four parcels. My understanding is actually based on a, a sublot of six parcels. So I don't know what was said in the meeting, and you know if it's. I don't know. I just I just wanted to raise that um, disconnect. Yes, that's a that's a great um, question. So, uh, Marsha had initially done uh, a schematic of a four lot subdivision, and that okay. was the basis for the appraisal. Okay, got it. He asked uh, Kevin Hurley to sort of sharpen his pencil with that four lot subdivision analysis, and he came up with a six lot subdivision. Okay. And so that was the base. So there was a reappraisal, or there was a supplemental. Okay, um, so yeah, so it's not incorrect anyway. I mean, that's the first. That yeah, okay, thank you. Four lots and two point two. Yeah, got it, got it. Didn't change the value going from four yes, lots to six lots. It did. Oh. Hopefully, so, yeah. Um, yeah. And then I did see a typo in the section below that. I'm sure you guys have have already sent that one in, but I can follow up with um with Colleen. Sorry, with Karen. That'd be great, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, Nick. See it. You, Nick, you're on mute. You see it? Okay, good. So it sounds like there's no substantive change. So I move we accept both minutes. Second. All right. And the vote. Greg? Aye. Nick? Aye. Gary? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And I am an aye as well. Delia. Anything for the director's update? Uh, so just to let you know that the White Ponds uh, Beach uh, Improvements Project is underway now. So that was the project that the NRC permitted in July after a robust public process in the spring and early summer. Um, the work that's undergoing underway right now is the tree removal, um, beginning to um, so pulverize the road, uh, remove the concrete stairs, and install the some of the drainage system um, for the stormwater improvements. So that, as I say, is underway now. I anticipate that you know within the next couple of weeks they'll wrap up for the winter. Um, we're keeping an eye on that to make sure that uh, um, you know the site stays stable uh, over the winter. And and Dealey, do you expect the, the project would be completed by late spring, something to that effect, or? I don't have a time end on the construction, but I can certainly find that out. Um, yeah, I'm going to be curious. on site tomorrow, and I'll ask the yeah. contractor that. Yep. Thank you. We don't. We only have a schedule through the end of this year. We don't have 2022 construction schedule. Got it. Okay, that's it, Delia. Yep. Okay. 
Um, I think we have one continuance uh, this evening, uh, 821 Strawberry Hill Road. I make a motion to continue without discussion. DEP file number 137-1580, 821 Strawberry Hill Road until Jan the January 5, 2022 meeting. Second. Thank you, Gary. And we'll take the vote. Greg? Yeah, aye. Gary? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Nick? You're on mute, Nick. That's okay. I saw your hand. Thank <laughs> you. And I am an I as well. All right. So we have a continuance this evening for 31 Sunnyside Lane, DEP file 137-1581. And I see Molly. Yep. You'll be walking us through this this evening. Yes, um, for the record, Molly Ebendorf with Stamsky McNary representing Bentley Building Corporation. Um, this is 31 Sunnyside Lane. And last we met with the commission, there's just a few remaining um, items to be addressed. One of which was we did submit an ANR plan um, for these lots, for the new lot line. Um, the tree protection detail has been updated to reflect the four foot high welded wire fence attached to metal stakes at a maximum of 10 feet apart. Um, and then there was a question about stockpiling. Stockpiling will actually not be done on this site. It will be done on 5B Sunnyside Lane, which is a vacant lot also owned by the applicant. Um, so it's fully outside the buffer zone and that's where all the stockpiling will be. Um, and then we got comments back from uh, CPW with regard to the drainage system. We responded to those comments um, and we did receive comments back recently. Um, and the last remaining comment from CPW is to add a um, plastic barrier to the foundation um, in front where the drywall is adjacent to that. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So if the commission has any um, questions or comments, we'd be happy to address them. Thanks, Molly. Um, just, just a couple of observations really for myself. I, I just see from the offset, it's I think the closest is what, 50 feet, seven inches approximately from the wetlands to the closest part of the house. Mm -hmm. and, and I get, I just ask that, you know, that takes into consideration, you know, the roof overhang, gutters, et cetera, right? Yep. Okay. And there, I think there's an outstanding question about the foundation drain. I, I know it's shown in the profile, but there's not a location on it. So there's a question of whether that, depending on if that is installed by way of proximity to the infiltration basin, if it would you know, affect that. So are, are you guys proposing that now, or there was a suggestion by staff that you could come back in the future if you wanted to do that. It seems like you have plenty of separation between groundwater and basement slab. Yeah, yeah, there's there's plenty of separation. Um, you know, we, we tend to show it on the profile just in case the uh, developer chooses to install it. In this case, it really is not needed. So I think, um, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we We're would be able to remove it. We, we can remove it from the, the profile. Also, I think we'd be okay with the, the commission um, doing a special condition on the order um, that we would have to come back to NRC. Okay. Um, but we do have to add the poly barrier to the um, detail anyways. So if Mark's okay with move, removing that from the profile, then we will also um, do that on the revision to the plan just to avoid any confusion or any, any future confusion for that. I'm okay with it being removed. Great. Okay. Um, other comments from the commissioner? Yes, Delia, I, I see your hand up. Do, do you, okay. Thanks, Ed. Uh, so I just, um, with the with the dry well, um, I, I, <clears throat> I think it would be helpful to have an operations and maintenance plan for that, for the, the homeowner and for us to understand what that procedure will be. If you can get that to us, Molly, as well. Okay. Oh, Delia, do you want that on the plan or just a separate document? I think just a separate document. I think there's enough stuff on the plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. We can do that. Thank you. Any other comments from 
any of the commissioners? Well, just the runoff onto Sunnyside Lane, has that been addressed through a comment? There's now a, a condition specifically about if when they redo the Sunnyside Lane. Calculus. Right, so, so um, they're proposing and CPW is, accept, is, is okay with um, having that reviewed as part of the roadway improvement plan. And um, we would recommend that the NRC include that language as a special condition, that the runoff from the driveway will be calculated as part of the um, stormwater calculations for the roadway. So it, it doesn't get lost. Right, so, but so it is included as a condition now, yeah, or will yes, be. Yes, we haven't drafted this one yet, yep. but it will be included for the January okay. 5th meeting, yep. Okay. Molly, Mark, you good with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments from the commission? Nope. All right. Uh, any comments from the public regarding this application? I don't see any hands up. All right. So I think with that, if, if, if you guys are good to continue to the January 5th, just for, you can update the plans, Molly, I would, assume in the next couple of days when yep, Friday? Absolutely, deal? yes. Okay. And then we'll have an order of conditions for you on the 5th. Great. Thank you. Thank time. you guys for your time. Have a good evening. You as well. All right. Um, let's see. Next project up is uh, uh, 61 Black Duck Road, DEP file number 137-1578. Uh, uh, as I have had to, Ed, before yes. I have to recuse myself. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Appreciate you raising that. Um, is there someone going to address this with us this evening? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Are here. How are you? And uh, I think Rich Harrington is here as well. How are you? Good. Thank you. So, uh, Dilly, do you want to pull up? content or should I just speak to it or should we go straight into questions? Uh, we could, I, I think Eric, I, 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 you know, I, th I think there's been some good guidance from the NRC over the last uh, couple of appearances in terms of, you know, your approach to the addition, some of the concerns, you know, surrounding the house. Um, so, it, so it appears, I, again, just looking at your submission or the most recent submission briefly, it seems like you're you, you, I think you have a good understanding of what we're looking for. Um, so I, yeah, so, so, so if you want to tell again, if you want to touch on it briefly, but I, I don't think we have to go over a lot of ground we've already covered, if you will. Yeah, so the um, the the request, as I understood it, was that the addition encroach no closer than the existing deck. I, I, you know, there's been some. Uh, discussion and perhaps disagreement on, on the interpretation of the policy, but regardless of that, the NRC and staff asked we have see if we could come up with a, a plan that is no closer than the existing deck. So then if you go to the next slide, um, I think we have come up with such a plan or such a footprint. We basically would move the entire addition to the uh, northeast and um, thereby maintain uh, no closer than a foot, 30 foot uh, distance from the wetlands, um, which is currently the distance uh, from the corner of the uh, the deck. Yeah, I think that I I think that kind of captures the the general approach that ha has been suggested by the commission and allowed yes. under the you know the fifty foot no build policy. So um, obviously, this is not a formal engineered drawing. Um, and we still need to, uh, we have to also uh, probably run this by the building department one more time, make sure that we're still okay with the being, you know, with the the, um, uh, the setback from the property line, um, given the change in the, the layout of the sunroom. But, you know, we, uh, if, if I can get a verbal, I, I, I don't know exactly how this works, but if I can get a verbal from, actually go to slide five, kind of summarizes what I'm, um, uh, proposing um, get a verbal approval of the of the footprint as you saw in the previous slide, 
Uh, and, if, and with that, I would develop a mitigation plan that provides a net benefit to the wetlands resource area, uh, provide an updated engineering site plan uh, based on that on, on this footprint. Um, working with our architect and with um, and, and uh, you know civil engineer and, and um, surveyor, um, I would review that updated engineering site plan with the building department, and I would update the NOI submittal um, for you know, formal consideration. Okay. I, again, I think that conceptually seems to uh, address the guidance we've received previously. Obviously, the devil is in the details, if you will, but sounds like you're on the right path in regard to that approach. Um, and, I, and again, I think there's just a couple of things um, just to note, uh, in, you know, again, being very specific about the, you know, the setback of 30 feet, one inches, if that's what it is. It should just be explicit, not 30 feet plus or minus. Yep. Um, and I and I think there's there's still a question again as between the two decks. You know, um, I know there's an existing deck and then a deck on the front, deck on the side. Looks like there there's a structure that you're proposing that's going to link those two. And again, just as your plans come forward, to be as specific as possible in regard to that. You know, thank you, Delia. Yeah, that kind of corner around the the house, not sure, you know, what you're intending there, but that's obviously not existing today, but I, your detailed plans coming forward will, I guess, tell us what that is. Um, uh, you, you, you noted you'll, you'll put together an invasive plan that should be by a kind of a certified, certified botanist. Um, and, um, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to replace the retaining wall, Eric, to some degree. Um, I, given that failure of the retaining wall would re, would result in much of that soil sliding into the wetlands, I think it'd be prudent to re replace that retaining wall, and I think would provide a net benefit. There's been some yep. discussion about whether there are different types of retaining walls that might actually provide some the habitat, right? You know, uh, stone retaining wall to provide habitat for you know, small small animals, I was told by one wetlands person, you know, could be perceived as, as a small benefit um, to the wildlife in that area. So okay. compared to the concrete that's there right now. Sure, okay, well, I, that's, sounds like that investigation is ongoing. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, again, buried stumps, abandoned metal fence, drains, et cetera, if you can show those on the plan and how, the, how those are gonna be dealt with and removed if there are, are the, 25 or the 50, uh, and I think including, I think there's a duck coop there as well. So all those can be maybe moved out of the 25 and 50 and, and relocated on your site. Okay. Um, and then again, I, I think we talked about the invasive species management plan and, uh, and, and obviously with that, there'll be a replanting plan as well. Mm -hmm. um, um. I guess while I have you, um, what is the uh, commission's opinion on uh, de-lawning, uh, you know, replacing lawn with, uh, you know, something other than grass? Whether that, how, how that is perceived? Depends on what you want to replace it with, I guess. Pigment. He's kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, again, if it's something that's uh, more conducive to the wetlands and wildlife, I think that would be a, a net benefit, of course, and perhaps the botanist can, can guide you on that. Yeah, native plantings are always a good choice, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I, think, uh, I think with that. Um, this is much better than our prior to discussion, so thank you very much. <laughs> you bet. Um, and I think there's one other note here I forgot to mention. I, I think there were some proposed planters on the previous plan, but those, those I, I hope, will not occur on the, the new plans you'll generate because those were within the 25 mm -hmm. and increased the uh, nonconformance. So I think they were on your previous plans, if you will. Okay, so even if planted with native, they would be considered? A structure that's being introduced into the 50, correct. Okay. Yeah. The native plantings in the ground, great, but. 
the plant itself is what represents a structure. So, yeah. and and Eric, uh, would uh, it, it seems like you've got a fair amount of work to do. Obviously, now that you've got you feel comfortable with the guidance, um, any thought of when you'd like to continue on? Uh, that's a really good question. We've um, we've engaged with our architect about about this. Um, yeah. You know, it'd be it's a pretty it's a pretty significant redesign. It's going to be fairly costly for us. So. Um, won't be next month. It probably won't even be the month after that. So, okay. um, yeah. Uh, do you want to, do you want to hold the date out there? Um, just, just, just so we can hold the date for you, whether it's February, what's the next, February. you want to hold an early February date, Eric? And then if, if you can't make it, we, we can continue. Okay. That, that'd be great. Delia, what, what, what's the first meeting in February? February 2nd. Okay. Well, well, Eric, if that's agreeable with you, we can hold you for February 2nd, and then you can let Delia know if that's doable or not. Okay. Very okay. good. Thank you. So, Ed, just one, one, yeah. one additional item. Um, you may have covered this, but I, I didn't hear about the chart of impervious ah. surfaces by zone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Delia. No, I, I missed that one. Um, you know, again, it, it, you know, Providing a chart of impervious surfaces by zone, um, you know, so we can so we can again address the mitigation. Um, all right. So, I guess to clarify, I, my impression was that I had submitted something like that in the original NOI submission. Um, yeah, but 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 it, but it'll change, Eric, based on your new design. Yeah, okay. Right. Just, so I'm just evolve. Make sure I'm, I'm I'm not that, that I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's the impact in the, the 50 with the new addition? And then obviously the mitigation will be 10 to one and, and so on, but it'll, it'll evolve as your design evolves. Yeah. So I have one that shows between the zero to 25, the 25 to 50, the 50 to hundred. Yep. Existing removed, added new total. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep. That sounds like you're, you yep. got it. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll hold you for early February. And if not, we'll, we'll see you sometime thereafter. Excellent. Thank you. Right. Have a nice holiday. Yes, you Thank too. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. All right. Uh, let's see. Under new applications this evening, um, 35 Adawan Road, file number 137-1584. Um, Casey, you're going to be discussing that this evening? I am. Good evening uh, to the commission. My name is Casey Ferrer. I work with Howard Stein Hudson. Um, we are here to discuss the um, relocation of an existing solar array. Um, the solar array, it's located at 35 Adawan Road, which is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Wynn Stanley. Um, the solar array uh, has been proposed to be relocated um, at a previous point, and the, the relocation area in which it was previously proposed is actually shaded by a very large pine tree. Um, so what this proposal does, the current proposal uh, wants to push it back just far enough to get by the pine tree. Um, unfortunately, this, this puts the solar array into the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, we are proposing to keep it as far away from the resource area as we can with, again, just avoiding the, the shading of the pine tree. Um, the closest edge of the solar array uh, with this configuration is 65 feet, uh, and that leaves the closest support pile uh, at 70 feet from the uh, resource area. Um, that 70 feet will be the closest disturbance. Um, but as, as I showed, I did show some erosion control, uh, which will be approximately 59 feet from the uh, resource area. Um, the solar array will be completely supported by six two and a half inch schedule 40 piles. Uh, these piles will be driven into the ground and that will uh, provide the foundation for the solar array. Um, the total disturbance of these piles will be approximately 30 square inches for all six of them. Uh, like I said, they're two and a half, they're just two and a half inch uh, schedule 40 piles. Um, and then additional uh, disturbance would just be the trenching for the electrical conduit. Um, and this trenching is only gonna occur from the previous location of the solar array um, because they're gonna basically convert the previous location into a junction box. Um, so that disturbance can be as minimal as possible, a, a bucket width of, a, of an excavator. Um, 
We are proposing silt fencing on the downhill side of the project. Again, that's at the 59 feet at its closest point. Um, I did have conversation with Colleen where she said the commission typically likes to see straw wattle. Um, if you'd like us to switch from silt fence to straw wattle, uh, you know, we'd be fine with that. Um, all disturbances are located within pre-existing maintained lawn area. Um, and all of the disturbances will be reseeded and maintained as lawn. And I, I believe that takes care of the majority of the proposal. Um, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer any of it. Thank you, Casey. Um, I, I don't have any particular questions on this. Any other commissioners? No, it's I mean, very clear. Yes, yeah, straightforward. Yeah, okay. Um, is there any public comment in regarding this proposal? All right, seeing none, I think we have uh, order of conditions for this project. Nick, you're on. You're on mute. There you go. There you I go. move that we close the hearing and issue an order of conditions for 35 out of one road DEP file number 1371584 with standard conditions one through twenty and special conditions 21 through 50. Second. Second. Thank you, Sarah. And the vote, Nick? Aye. Gary? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Greg? Aye. And I am an aye as well. Thank you, Casey. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Yeah, Thank you, you too. Bye. Uh, all right, next uh, application, 1861 Sudbury Road. Uh, NOI file number 137-1586 for Neshotic Country Club. Good evening. First of all, make sure you can hear me. Everybody hear me okay? Yes, yes yeah. we do. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Brem. I'm representing Neshotic Country Club again. I believe I'm the only one on the line tonight because this, we believe, is a pretty simple project. Um, so during the construction of the building a couple of years ago, right away, uh, they realized that the kiddie pool, it's a circular pool there on the right in the middle of the plan, uh, was going to get impacted by the construction. There was just really no way to save it uh, without, they were going to try to save the decking, but not, but save the pool, but not the decking. And then it was just decided to get rid of the pool um, and, and replace it with a new pool. So that area has been removed during the construction of the building just a couple of years ago, and they always planned on doing something. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on in the club. So finally, they got the chance to organize it, get a pool company on board. Try, if you haven't tried to, to call a pool company right now and see when you think they're going to come. They're talking 2024 and beyond right now. So uh, they've got them committed for 2022. So we're ready to go. So the same architecture firm, uh, landscape architecture firm uh, and myself that did the original clubhouse design. So we got Mogul Architecture. They're working with uh, South Shore Gunite Pools and have developed this design here. So instead of a circle, you see this, uh, I don't know what, the, what a four-sided non-parallel shape is called, but- uh, <laughs> Rhombus maybe, I don't know. Rhombus, yeah, there you go. We have this uh, unparalleled shape, which is interesting. Um, it, basically, the design comes from setbacks off of the walls and the and the fencing and so forth. So there's certain required setbacks for the patio and the play area, and uh, that's it. From your point of view, every let's start with the simple thing. Everything is it within the 200 foot riverfront area. Everything is outside of the 100 foot riverfront area that was done on purpose. There is no work in the within the bank of the Sudbury River. There is no work within the BBW of the Sudbury River. There's no work within the bordering land subject to flooding of the river. There is work in the riverfront, like I said, and there is work in the buffer zone. There's no work in the wetland conservancy district or the floodplain conservancy district. So we're really here for outer riparian zone work and buffer zone to the wetland. Uh, we comply with your 50 foot uh, no structure policy. We comply with a no 25, uh, the no work within 25 feet of the wetland delineation. There's stormwater for this, it was all part of the original design. So there's really no need to do any stormwater. Uh, there's no changes to the impervious area. Uh, there's a section 
uh, I think it's eight square yards of asphalt that's getting repositioned. It's basically being moved, and and that's it. So the this is a pretty simple project. It's a replacement project. Um, then this is the, there were some questions from Colleen about the wall heights and the fence materials. I ha I sent them off earlier today. I don't know if Delia got them. It, Basically, there's a 42 inch high retaining wall separating the main pool area from the kiddie pool. And in that wall is just a sitting wall so that the parents can sit while the kids are in the pool. Exactly, thank you, Delia. On the opposite side is a, is a, a privacy fence. And that's gonna separate the lawn area. To the right of that line is kind of the entrance to the facility for the, um, the club members. The general public enters from up above for their um, events and functions and so forth. But this is really the main entrance. So that fencing is kind of important from a privacy point of view to the pool area. The existing pool building stays the same. That's where all the showers are. The, uh, all the other amenities of the club stay the same. You see the umbrellas that they recently put out there, those umbrella stands, uh, all the other retaining walls and other impacts that were done for the clubhouse, that all stays the same. So it's, it's, although it's a simple project, we are within your zone. So that's why we're here tonight. Thank you. Um, you did know, Jeff, that you got some comments from Colleen, a couple of things on that list, right? Showing stockpile location. Yes, I'm sorry. Detail. The stockpile location we will show and the okay. silk fence, or actually I just heard you want a, a straw wattle, we'll show that as well. If you were to approve that, we could show that and hopefully a staff can uh approve that for you all right and and do you think the retaining wall is going to need a building permit if it's over four feet it's 42 inches so definitely no is, is that 42 that's inches yeah does that include the you know subsurface footing? no i don't know if it is required then okay. with this, this structural engineers on board and everything there so that's not a problem okay this is a full design team here not a problem all right very good. Just wanted to, uh, you know, I'd point that out, if you will. Yep. Um, any comments from the commissioners regarding this? Again, looks like almost like a replacement in kind, other than the shape and and type. All right. Any comments from the public regarding this application? All right. Seeing no comments, uh, Jeff, are you good to continue to January fifth? Assuming you can get those planned revisions in by the uh, by Friday, I can. I'm going away the end of the month for a month, and uh, so that works for me. All right, then we'll plan on seeing you back uh, uh, on the fifth. Very good. I, no need to. I think ah. with just as long as those plan changes come in and they're acceptable, I don't think there's any need for you to come back on the fifth. You guys are so always amenable. I don't know what the rumor is. It's, it's always I've always said it over and over again. I love working in Concord. I don't know. Maybe it's me you like. I don't know. But I, I have no problem with that, Delia. Thank you. Can we? Can I just check, please, that um, that um, somebody's brought to your attention the um, existing permit that needs to be closed out? Oh yes, thank you, Sarah. No, I don't know about that. There is a we didn't file the certificate of compliance request. God, I right, thought we did a long time ago. House, that's that is still outstanding. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So our that's standards. That's news to me. Okay. Um, Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. About uh, yeah. So generally, what we would do is include a condition that that is closed out within six months. Um, just make sure that um, all the reporting uh, for the invasives and replanting work has been submitted. Okay. Delia has done a really good job during the construction. I don't know if you guys are aware, but we had construction reports sent to her almost every time it rained and she was right on the ball responding every single time. It was really, it was really good to see it all working well. Nice to hear that, Thanks, Jeff. Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good Have evening. Good evening. Yeah. Bye. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, next project, 127 Comerford Road, RDA file number 21-31. Hi, um, I guess we're supposed to speak. It's uh, Joe, yeah, and Donna please. <laughs> Joe and Donna Filippos. We just moved to Concord about three months ago. Um, and uh, early on during our, um, uh, our tenure here, I guess, we noticed during a windstorm that 
um, the trees looked like they were going to fall on our house. So we were a little bit terrified, frankly. Uh, we were on a heavily wooded lot um, that is near a creek. Uh, you'll see in the plans that were a few hundred. Um, most of the trees we're um, talking about cutting down are within the 200 foot buffer. And uh, I don't think any are within the 100. I could be wrong. But um, but the sole purpose of this is to not have trees crush our home. There is very little else going on here other than that. Kathy Schreiber, our landscape architect, is on the uh, Zoom as well. And uh, Kathy is proposing, um, you know, replantings and other things to replace any of the trees that we would cut down or any any other movement we have. But that's really the extent of it. We might do some, you know, um, superficial other things, but it really doesn't impact anything else. We're not, no erosion or anything like that that I can think of. It's simply cutting trees that are uh, very large and um, and hover over the home. Uh, Kathy, anything else that you'd want to add? Uh, not at the moment. Are you guys going to pull up the project on the screen, Delia? Sure. She that. just had it up, I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do, shall I bring it back up? Yeah, only would you like this? Bring it back up. Feel, only if you feel there's a need to for the commission. I, I, yeah, just to jump in, I think that the only the only question I think there was a total of what you had proposed was it a total of eighteen trees? I think that's right. Yes. Yeah. And I think that and, and Delia Will went out there as well. Will Holden from the NRC and and took a look at the trees and I think he suggested and and frankly agreed that what was presented made made sense with perhaps the exception of two trees that could be perhaps pruned and saved. Yeah, that would probably make sense because there were a couple of smaller ones, like yeah. smaller, mid-sized ones. Mm -hmm. That makes total sense. We were we talked to the arborist and we had some tree companies uh, come out and look and partially why they suggested cutting some of the sort of mid-sized ones was they were so close to the other ones anyway and they would be maybe in the way, frankly. Um, but we're fine not cutting those. I don't think they threaten the home, but the vast majority of the rest do. Okay. Thank you. I think what Will had recommended, he, he was impressed with your arborist report, by the way. So thanks for oh, really providing a, a, a thorough um, analysis on that. But he had recommended um, trees number seven and 18, which are, it's a six inch, uh, a six inch elm and a 12 inch hemlock numbers yeah. seven and 18 he recommended just pruning those and retaining yeah that's no problem at all that's no problem at all Great. commissioners any any comments on this it just had one comment and it has nothing to do with the petitioner it's just in the document we got sent the excel sheet that had the writing in red and the chart of what's coming down who produced that it seems to me if well. we get some that That's well. what I thought, but I thought maybe f going forward, it would be advisable to, to put on there the author of it or some identifying yes. feature. Because yep. it, it truly, I don't believe it even says, um, yeah, well, it says the address, but that's about it. Yeah, that's I assume point. that's what it was, but it really didn't say that. Right. No, actually, that's a good point, Greg. I actually thought this might have been produced by the, the homeowners and, and Will's commentary was in red. That's all. That's I. Th that's, so that's what I correct. think it is. I that's think that's right. what it is. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just well, like. So if I could just make a comment for the record. So um, often we talk about snags and whether it's worth keeping any, and I I note that it's already been considered and that none of the trees are worth keeping as snags, just in case anyone out there listening is wondering. Oh, is that what from the result of what Will said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Will also, I believe it was Will, also mentioned something about mitigation, and I don't know whether that's a possibility here, whether you would consider replanting. Oh, um, we, yeah, we did propose some plants It's in the, in the report. I think it's a one-to-one -one tree replacement, right? The, nine the trees and 18 Nine shrubs. natives, oh, that's yeah. Right. Nine and 18 shrubs. 18 yeah, shrubs. And it's in this location, which is the general location of the tree removal work, just yeah. generally. But it does, and it does meet the one to one. Mm -hmm. um, what what Will had suggested, and we wrote up, it isn't probably applicable to this application because we've already given the Philipposes the guidance of the one to one. But you know, Will is the reviewing agent uh, for the tree preservation bylaw, and so when he thinks about the mitigation, he and I have talked about this. That there is a disconnect in how we talk about one to one. 
but the tree bylaw looks at uh, caliper um, mm. size. So anything that's low or moderate risk would be mitigated at a 50%. So if you're taking out a hundred mm. inch, 100 inches of caliper of low to moderate risk trees, then the applicant would be required to do a 50 caliper replacement. So 10 five inch trees or whatever, whatever combination you come up with. Not for this application, but something for the NRC to consider. Um, maybe yeah, we'll put that absolutely. on an agenda to talk about for future. Projects. Yeah, let's put that. Yeah, let's put that on the maybe depending on the how many hearings we have on the fifth. Maybe we could put that on. Mm -hmm. And Delia, you and I talked about the terminology of ten feet on center, and I think you were going to try to. So for this application, I don't think it's going, it doesn't, it's not relevant for this application, yeah. just be based on how, you know, as, as long as, you know, what I would, what I would like to see is that, you know, the, the mitigation is kind of um, focused in the, in the resource areas as much as possible. Um, yes. But you have a very large area that you're working with here. Um, I don't think you need, I didn't actually do that research that we were talking about, Kathy, about the That's difference. Right. Between, no, I just yeah. wondered if it was something you, you follow up off about line on that, but yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get to it. Um, it. But I think for what is proposed here, I mean, we just don't want to see a little military row of replacement no. plantings, obviously. Oh, come on. on. <laughs> and neither do we. We don't want that either. <laughs> <I'm> good. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me just ask the, any public comment in regard to this application. All right, seeing none, I think we have a recommendation. Um, I'd like to issue a negative determination, um, numbers two and three, with the following conditions. That there's a pre-construction site visit is held with DNR staff and the contractor to review the limits of work. Number two, after the project has been completed, including the mitigation plantings, the applicant shall submit a letter to the NRC stating that all work has been conducted in accordance with all conditions of this determination of applicability. Any changes from the RDA shall be described. Thank you, Nick. I saw your hand. And the vote, Gary? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Nick? Aye. And Greg? Aye. And I am an eye as well. Thank you very much, guys. Good luck with the, the tree Thank work. You. Appreciate Thank it. You very Thank much. you. Happy I holiday. Know. Good night Thanks. now. And to you. Happy holiday. All right. Uh, moving to a close and issue. I believe there's an order of conditions. Yes. Okay. Um, I remove, I move that we uh, close the hearing and issue an order of conditions for. Uh, DEP file number 1371582, Williams Road, uh, with findings A, B, and C, nor special normal conditions, standard conditions 1 through 20, and special conditions 21 through 55. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. And the vote, Gary? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Greg? Aye. Nick? Aye. And I'm in I as well. All right. I think we're. I think what's up next is certificates of compliance. So the Zenkus uh, 309 Lindsay Pond Road is a partial certificate of compliance, and that is, uh, you'll recall, that was for the unauthorized work uh, on a property that was being sold, um, the patio and the uh, wall and slope into uh, the 25 foot no disturb zone. So that work is all being pulled back um, and it's being stabilized. It's not fully stable now, um, um, but they're just looking for that partial certificate so that some of the money that's being held in escrow um, can be returned to the um, seller. So staff recommends a, a, an issuance of that partial COC. Okay. Do you wanna do the other one Delia too and we can take, we can do sure. them both together? And and I'll just say that for the 309 Lindsay Pond Road, we are still expecting that they're going to be providing the reports on the invasives removal and the, the uh, monitoring for the replantings as well. Okay. Uh, 3A Crescent Road is lot two, also partial. Um, that is for the construction of uh, the house on lot two. 
Um, and again, we'll be waiting for, or we'll keep this open until we have the three years or the three seasons of monitoring reports. So partial for both of those. Okay. So we're gonna take that on. I make a motion to issue uh, COCs for DE, partial uh, COCs for DEP file number 1371573, which is 309 Lindsay Pond Road, and DEP file number 137-1449. That's also a partial, uh, which is 297 Elm Street, uh, AKA 3A Crescent Road. I don't know what that means. Um, formally, I guess. Okay, uh, yeah. All right. There's second. second. Thank you, Sarah. And we'll take the vote. Nick? Aye. Greg? Aye. Gary? Aye. Sarah? Aye. I am an aye as well. All right. And now we move to other business. Letter of support for Junction Village Open Space Concept Plan. You guys all got a copy of that? Write it over? Yes. Okay. I seem seem fine with me from reading. Look good to me. Look perfect. Okay. Gary, Nick, you good? Yeah, no. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, DLA, do you need? Yes. Uh, if you can just take a vote, and I'll I'll sign on your behalf. Okay. Fine. I would vote to support to issue a letter of support for the project to the CPC. Okay. I move that we issue a letter of support to the CPC in support of the Junction Village Open Space Task Force proposal. Second. Okay. Thank you, Greg. And the vote, Nick? Aye. Greg? Aye. Sarah, you and I? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say Sarah. Aye. <laughs> I apologize. Gary? Aye. I am and I as well. All right. Um, next order of business, TLCT 28X, Balls Hill Road, Bob yes. Bridges. Okay. Uh, can we jump to the second one first? I don't seem to have the graphic up and I'll pull it up as I'm talking. The, uh, the Actually, Henry Moss. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me just pull it up. It's easier if I just do this. Well, okay. Keep it straightforward. Okay. Um, so there are, uh, this is a land trust property uh, at October Farm Riverfront. Uh, this is uh, an existing trail that has been in existence for a long time. Uh, it's, a, it's the river trail, it's the wide cart path um, that shows up on USGS mapping. So it goes back many years, not many of our trails do. Um, and, and this is significant because um, it's, it's quite a well-worn path. Um, I think given the very wet year that we experienced and possibly increased use from hikers as well as maybe bikes and horses as well, it's created these three spots that are depressions that are highlighted on, on this graphic here. Um, and two of the three are within wetlands. Um, and the land trust is looking to do sort of a more permanent solution that I suggest they file for, but they, they're, they're looking to sort of dig out the organics and replace it with a, a more um, compacted material like gravel. And they're gonna investigate, I think that, you know, they think there's probably that material on either side and this has maybe just become a little bit degraded, but in the immediate sort of, in the immediacy, um, they, they are requesting bog bridging um, in these three locations to just be able to not have such muddy, mucky conditions to, to pass through. Um, we're seeing this a lot more, and I think it's because of such a wet year. Um, and the next one that will be on up for you guys is, is gonna be the same thing. And I, I talked with Joan Ferguson a little bit about this you know, whether or not it makes any sense to close off trails that are really wet and muddy um, so that they can just be allowed to kind of dry out a little bit and not be constantly trampled and made worse. But, you know, you can see here, I think that would be very challenging here. This is such a popular trail 
and I think you would have to, you know, do a sort of an odd reroute. <laughs> or you could do it like this, but in any event, um, I, I would be comfortable recommending just doing some, you know, two foot wide fog bridging on, on either, you know, our standard sleepers, which are half logs, or mm -hmm. in, maybe in these wetter areas, putting them on half culverts so that it allows some water flow underneath. I don't think that's entirely necessary here. And we don't generally do that on our trails either, but just three small sections of bog bridges, um, the exact dimensions being, um, let's see, about, uh, so 12 boards on one, four boards on a second and, uh, that's two total. So actually it's four total boards with two sections of eight foot stringers and then um, six eight foot stringers. Uh, and then this third spot, I don't have a dimension for, but it's, it's going to be no more than, than two eight foot sections. Okay. And, and Delia, presumably once they've worked out the longer term solution, if if they they'll come back to us, will they to talk about that? Yeah, they will need yeah. to file. Um, I I I would anticipate a notice of intent for that work mm -hmm. because it is within the resource area. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Is this intended to be a permanent? Um, it, it you know they rot out eventually, but is is the idea that these would stay for the foreseeable future, even even in dry weather? Is not in other words, is what I'm driving at. Yeah, I would say once they're in, they're not going to come out. Right. It just may require if, if if there's much horse. It used to be a lot of horseback riding in there. I'm not sure there still is, still but do, I don't know. Do horses go on these, or do they? Would they circumvent them, and there'll be a horse? So there'll be a, a slightly right. worn area where the horses go, and then humans right. on foot. Yeah. There is a lot uh, less. Um, horse activity than there were in, was in years past. Right, right. Um, horses would avoid walking on those boardwalks. Right. Um, but I think with, and, and bikes as well, you know, so it, it's, it's, um, it will be but interesting. It, 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 it might be a suggestion to ask them what, whether they would consider restricting horse riding during those very high, you know, very mucky, mucky times is kind of where I'm going. I was, I was thinking the same thing, maybe uh, something to restrict the horses, ask them the courtesy of not using it while it's that way. And I so would say that if, we, if we're going to suggest that to the land trust, that this is um, NRC land here, and that it should be something that we are also... Not on the coming. screen, Delia. He, he's we're not up. Oh, gosh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking right at it. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. So here are the three wet spots. Uh, this darker green is NRC land. Um, uh -huh. Mm. So we would also need to have the same um, mass, mass Audubon land is here. They don't allow horses, uh, but I think that they have some agreements with, I know there are some agreements with some of the neighbors who have historically walked dogs that they can walk dogs. I think they probably have a similar arrangement with the few people who ride. Um, so I think that's, if we're going to ask the land trust to do that, we need to be prepared to do that on the um, NRC. I, I, I was just being for clarity that that it won't, if they continue to allow horses, I don't, I'm not making a decision, that's their decision, but I'm just saying, let's not kid ourselves if the horses go there, that they will muck it up next to that, that wooden bridge. That's all, that was yeah. kind of my point. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't suggesting that making a motion or anything that, that we have anything to do with their restrictions, let them run it themselves right. but I, I think it it bears watching um because i you know as we know we're seeing more bike activity and and um um you know i think it we need to just be aware of it and and prepared to sort of address it as we need to in the future yeah, and, and my observation is the the river the water ain't going down <laughs> it's been up a long time and it's staying up it is up has not gone down it's true not, not yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. Nice problem to have, actually. <laughs> All 
Um, I, I assume we need a, a, a motion here, Delia? No, nope. not on this one? Okay. All right, you're all set. And then the last one, Henry Moss. Uh, there's one more. I apologize, it came in. Um, um, so the Miriam Close PRD Trust. Um, there are two areas. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so this is Gowing Swamp. Actually, let me get to... Um, Wow. Yeah, I bought this the other day. <laughs> yes. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. It's muddy. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Mucky. Okay. Um, so this is Gowing Swamp here. Um, and there is a conservation restriction on the land held by the town. Um, shown here in the hatched green. The first section that they would like to replace is this north section um, that is within 25 feet of um, Gowing Swamp wetland. And it, it again, it has been a very wet year. Um, they're looking to put in about 100 feet foot length of, of bog bridging, two foot wide bog bridging. Um, this is a, 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 can you see this different picture with Not the yet. 100 foot wet section? No. No, just, just, the, okay. just, just the aerial. Okay. I don't know how to switch between, between that, but I'll figure that out. Anyway, this is, yeah. um, we'll develop this graphic that shows you know, this area of about a hundred feet that they'd like to put boardwalks on. I, I had wondered whether they could just, you know, as the trail comes around this, this edge here, why not just, there is a trail that goes over the cemetery lands that could sort of do this. But I, they're not really interested in doing that. I think they just want to maintain that experience of walking along the edge of the wetlands. Um, this is, uh, and Delia, you said, oh, I see. Okay. Do you so see this photograph? They, yeah, mm. yeah. They're, so they're not replacing. This would be all new. This would be new bog bridging. And you said it would be wide bog bridging? No, it would be two feet wide. Two feet, okay, mm -hmm. two feet wide, standard. Two feet wide. Okay. And about 100 feet long. Um, they might not need to do that much. I hope they don't. I think that's a lot of bog bridging. I mean, that's. That's a lot of bog bridging. I don't mm. know anywhere that we've got a hundred feet, but Will thought maybe sixty feet would be enough. Um, so that's the north side of the swamp, and then on the south side, um, in this area, um, right at this curve, it's at the base of this steep hill. Um, they have a, a pretty significant problem there where um, this is interesting. Can you see this, these two photographs? Not yet. Okay. Is that the picture? Is that the one you pulled up initially? At the very beginning, I think that's the one yes. you showed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this photograph was taken yeah. in 2017, right after that microburst tore through this mm. area. Mm -hmm. And this is in the spring of 2017. So it was late spring, so not the wettest part of the spring, but um, perfectly dry. Mm -hmm. And this is, this tree here is oh. this tree yeah. here. Wow. Uh, this tree here is this tree. This is now um, several inches deep. Mm. Has there been erosion? Is, is that erosion? Yeah. Well, there's bike traffic out there now that never. Well, I, I, mean, think, never. I, I think that's I think that's kind of brings up my point on the other location is that if you put a wooden bridge in there, the bike's going to ride beside it. Are they not? I know. So, so I, is, yeah, go ahead. 
Well, that's I, I I'm I'm not sure what to do about this one because um, the CR is silent on bites. Uh, it's one of the very old CRs. It doesn't say anything about bites. It just talks mm -hmm. about passive recreation. But you know, I think that there is damage that's occurring here. And I mean, I think what I would suggest is saying to the the, the homeowners association that okay, we're approving the the bog bridging in these two locations, but that there's a concern about the action that is causing some deterioration of the of the natural features. And we're just gonna ask that you, you know, consider well, how you might make sure that that doesn't worsen over time. Ask them for a plan, is that what you? Really? I think it's really just monitoring it. And then if there is further degradation, then it's, you know, what steps can be taken. And I don't know that they're, I, I haven't had the conversation with them about whether they would even be willing to think about, you know, restricting bicycle use or anything like that. And then it becomes a question of how do you enforce that? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's sure. Really hard. Well, or, 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 or research to see if there are people are using different techniques that bicycles can go on that don't that don't we're using an old-fashioned kind of method mm. of basically laying down plank there may be another way of getting around that that they could research and say look you know the object is to stop the erosion and in, in degradation so see if you can't research that and and, yeah. and and adapt to that you know before you, like you put in all the planking and spend that money just give it a shot and see what you come up with you know yeah you yeah. might you, you might be able to ramp up into the bog bridges a little bit and you know ask the bicycles to get on the bog bridges you know yeah but if you made them safer if they're if they're you know sort of slippery to ride on or something on a corner especially there might be i can't imagine somebody isn't inventing it otherwise gary and i will sit down and invent it and make a lot of money and <laughs> we'll have islands much? in the Caribbean. <laughs> what kind? What kind of linear footage do, do they have? A projection of linear footage on this corner, if you will, of bog bridges. Yes. So this one, um, uh, sixty feet. All right. And and is is will and 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 how are you going to monitor the the hundred feet suggestion and maybe sixty feet? That's how Will feels about it. Is that just kind of monitoring as they build and kind of working aside them in terms of just observation? Maybe we can say that under this approval, sixty feet um, is is granted, and if more bridging is needed, to just come back and let us know. That makes sense. That, that seems practical. Ed, did we skip over this, uh, Henry Moss? Thing? We did. Not yet. We did. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, this. I, think um, I mentioned that. I think Delia, you wanted to do this one first, perhaps. Um, you know why? Because I, 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 I'm looking at the wrong uh, agenda, and ah, <laughs> the okay. CLCT should have been under administrative approvals. And so I, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Karen. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Yes. Uh, so you. once we're once, if you're okay with this, I'll tell them uh, two sixty foot sections yeah. for this southern section before you start laying the planking down. See if there, or for both sections actually, see if there are other methods that are in use in other places that would be amenable to allowing bikes to traverse the the the, the planking, I guess, and not create additional. Kind of side trail the side. Yeah. yeah okay thank you thank you henry moss so cpc is uh, has a vacancy uh and that vacancy is the nrc liaison and henry moss is interested in serving and so the uh, motion before you this evening is to recommend his appointment to the for the select board to um, so recommend appointment of Henry Moss to this um, CPC to the select board. To, yes, recommend his appointment to the CPC, and the recommendation is made to the select oh, board. So, moved. so this is there usually two <laughs> two representatives then on on CPC two appointees. I, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Not CPC. It's not CPC. Um, it's not. It's the Historic <laughs> Districts Commission. I'm oh, there so you sorry. go. 
Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. No, that's good. News. I was going to say I thought I was a CPC person. <laughs> I thought you were stepping down. <laughs> no, I like the CPC. <laughs> Colleen has to give you better notes. You know, she can't put you out like this. <laughs> I have to read my emails more closely. No, I was fixed on it being CPC. I, um, Heather already corrected me this morning. It's not. It's not CPC. We're all set. <laughs> Well, that's good because that, that that's been a that's been vacant for quite a while, right? I think from the NRC rep. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that may be so, and they just found um, somebody to fill the spot. That's great. It sounds like there's going to be another opening um, coming up in December as well. Ah, okay. For which one? For the historical. Historic. Yes. <laughs> You're not going anywhere, Sarah. Right? <laughs> 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 okay, uh, can we have a motion, please? I move that we um, nominate uh, for associate member to the HDC, Henry Moss, 557 Sudbury Road. Uh, we recommend to the select board that he be um, nominated, voted on, actually. Second. Thank you, Gary. And the vote, Nick? Aye. Greg? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Gary? Aye. Graham and I as well. I think that is it on the agenda. So motion to adjourn. Yes, sir. Motion Second. to adjourn. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. Gary. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Greg. Aye. Nick. Aye. And I am an I as well. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Happy holidays, guys. Happy yeah. holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.